Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a model line launched in 2015, the successor to the Date 8 II. This is the Date 8 40, and specifically, this is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Date 8 40 reference. 228239 in white gold. So 40 millimeters in diameter. It is a fairly slim watch, as you can see, only 12.2 millimeters thick. From lug tip to lug tip, it measures 47.4 millimeters. And unlike the Date 8 II here, we don't have solid projecting end links on the bracelet. So the total distance across the wrist, even when you add the end links, it's almost the same as the lug to lug. Total distance across the wrist is 47.6 millimeters. And again, that's because of the pivoted ergonomic ergonomic end links. The spacing between the lugs is 21 millimeters. We'll throw this watch on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist and it really wears so much better than the old Date 8 II. The Date 8 II, because of the solid end links, was over 53 millimeters across the wrist. Again, this is 47.6. It's a total paradigm change and people who couldn't wear the older watch will easily wear this one even though nominally there's only a one millimeter case diameter size. It's all about the end links of the bracelet and I can recommend this watch watch for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. Here's your over the top. You can see the cuff shot easily sliding underneath the dress cuff flat and with a sloped bezel. The President Bracelet, which debuted back in 1956 with the first Date 8. The watch has often been nicknamed the Rolex President or Presidential because of the famous and often infamous folks in power who've worn these watches. But truth be told, it's always been called the Date 8. Properly, the bracelet has always been called the President. It's a three-link design that has some of the short link cross-section souplesse, comfort, and venting capability of the five-link Jubilee dress bracelet but it has the three-link solidity of the Oyster Sports Bracelet, so it's really the best of both worlds. You can see we have a combination of polished centers, satin shoulders, polished outer faces. There's a conforming end link to smoothly made it to the case, and then there is a taper from the end link down to the clasp. The clasp has become more sophisticated over the years. You can see internally it's nicely finished. It's thick gauge white gold. And then we have this pivoted uh, beak and hook system. This is actually a lift lock. Watch it latch. Now, I can't just pull this open. I need to lift and un latch it. So you see how that security system works right there? It's actually quite resilient. The watch being automatic, loomed, and 100 meters water resistant is a credible sporting option. So you can take this swimming, you can use this as part of an active lifestyle. It's not fragile, and thanks to that new clasp mechanism, it's not going to fly open. The bracelet has a refinement that was previously only available on the platinum version of the Date 8 II. The pins that hold the links together internally are now ceramic coated. The idea being that the white gold cannot aggress against the pins and wear them down, so the bracelet will not, quote, stretch. It was never a matter of links stretching. It was always the pins inside thinning out with the ceramic coating. That's done. Rolex has its own foundry. It makes its own cases, clasps, and bracelets, and it makes its own gold alloys, including gray gold, which is what it uses here. Gray gold is white gold, 18 karat, but it's white all the way through, and it never needs to be rhodium plated. It's the good stuff you'll find on JLC, Patek, Rolex, Alex Grubel Forsey, companies that don't rhodium coat their white gold. Here we have a, a twin lock crown in gold, you know, because it has two dots. Rolex crowns have little symbols that let you know the material, and whether you're looking at a twin lock or a trip lock, this is a twin lock. Along with the screwed in case back, we have that 100 meter water resistance. We have a faceted fluted bezel in white gold, and we have a dark rhodium coated metallic dial with a tapestry pattern laser cut that runs from top to bottom. The crown, the indices, and the hands are white gold because if moisture should intrude on the watch, this material will not oxidize or tarnish. So over time, you get everlasting beauty with these white gold pieces placed on the dial. Loom shot, Rolex's proprietary chromolite blue loom. This is why I say this is a fairly sporting watch. And then it's a double quick set and hacking movement. So we'll screw the crown out. And now you can see I have access to a double quick set. There's the date, there's the day. Very simple, allows me to set both of them. Now there's also a hacking or stop seconds function that holds the seconds hand. Now I can set the watch to a known accurate reference time. Generally the way to do that is to wait for the seconds hand to get at 60, then stop it, then set to the minute. 
Okay, what's inside? Well, it's what's inside that counts. Fun fact, with these 3200 series movements, they set in a different direction than the old 3100s. So if you suspect you may be looking at a counterfeit Rolex of the current generation, if you turn it clockwise and it sets forward, counterfeit. If you turn it counterclockwise and it sets forward, that's a good sign that it's probably real. The 3035s set counterclockwise. The 3235s set counterclockwise. But the middle child, the 3135, set clockwise. And you can see that is not the case here. So taking a quick look at that case back, you're going to have to use your visual imagination. We have that caliber 3255 bidirectional automatic winding. The winding system now uses a rotor bearing rather than the older jeweled staff. It's got a 70-hour power reserve, the Liga-formed Kroner G escapement, which is a uh, Swiss lever, yeah. Yes, it's, it's not as extreme as the system used on the Omega Coaxial, though Chronergy is Rolex's answer to the Omega Coaxial. And yes, it delivers. This watch is COSC certified as a bear movement. Rolex then cases up the bear movement, tests it in six positions to ensure that the full assembled watch will run no worse than minus two plus two seconds per 24 hours, and that is the superlative chronometer standard. We've got a full balance bridge and a free sprung balance for shock tolerance and precise adjustment. We have a handmade breguet overcoil hairspring so that the watch will keep consistent time in any position. That's the advantage of an overcoil. Its mass is centered. It will not speed up or slow down like a flat hairspring will in different positions. And that over coil is a blue oxidized niobium zirconium that makes this water resistant and shock resistant watch also highly anti-magnetic. It beats way at 8 beats per second and it pivots on 31 joules. And yes, even the shock protection system Paraflex and the very lubricants used are designed and manufactured by Rolex. So this is a full manufacture product by one of the most integrated manufacturers in the business. Reach out to Team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.